Hello and welcome back to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and today I'm going to be showing how I made my Daydreaming Mermaid. So let's jump right in. For my base I'm going to be working with this Laguna Blue that's from my stock box. She came to me missing her legs and she already had her face wiped and her hair buzzed down so I'm fairly certain she was from someone else's stock box once upon a time. I plop her down into some boiled water and once her vinyl is nice and squishy I pull her head off. Using my flathead screwdriver, I scraped the inside of her head to loosen up the plugs, and I do believe I left her head into the hot water just a little bit too long because this glue got really sticky and nasty. And then I used my needle nose pliers to pull it all out. Then using my 100% acetone, I'll go ahead and give her a quick swipe and remove all of that original paint. Then I repaint her scalp with some acrylic paint in the colors of the hair that I've chosen. I had a hard time choosing the specific shade that I wanted, so I decided to use these three shades and just do a custom blend. To get these blended together, I take a section from each of these three colors and then I put them all together and then just slowly comb them out with a wide tooth comb. I'll comb a bit and then I'll flip and hold the other end, then I'll comb a bit more and sometimes I'll hold in the middle and comb. I just do this over and over and over again until there's no big chunks of color left. You will lose a little bit of hair with all of the combing, just make sure that you have enough to do the whole reroute. Then once I'm satisfied with my blend, I go ahead and start with a reroute. I reroute this like normal, I just loop it around my finger, then slide it onto the tool, and then tighten the hair, and then plug it down into the head. And I reroute the front hairline first, and whenever I'm putting my tool into the vinyl, I make sure that I'm keeping it perpendicular to that hairline so that I'm not straddling two holes at once and ripping my vinyl. Now, normally when I'm creating a part line that doesn't exist, I don't even bother putting extra holes there. I just go ahead and stab my tool down in it, but this Laguna's vinyl was on the harder side, and the first time I did, it broke needles. So I did go ahead and using a thumbtack just made a few holes first and then I'd plug my hair and then go back and make some more holes and plug some hair. After I finish plugging one side of the part, I go in and I plug the other side. And to do this, I have sectioned off one side of the hair so that it stays out of the way. And then I'm plugging my hair back down into the same holes, but I'm flipping it in the opposite direction this time. Doing this just creates a nice, beautiful, full part. Then when I'm finished with my part, I just fill in all the rest of the holes of the head. Some people like to do thatched parting, but I have never been able to get that to work and look right for me. So this is just the way I do it. Now she has a nice full head of hair and I'm so in love with this color. It's just so just mermaidy. Now to secure all those plugs, I'm going to use a little bit of liquid fusion glue, just dollop some down in there and then spread it around with a Q-tip, making sure that I touch all of those plugs to secure it really well. We will set that aside to dry while we work on the body. I go ahead and give her a really good sanding and I don't really care if the panties are gone or not. I'm going to be covering that up with epoxy sculpt anyway, so it doesn't matter. When I sand, I start with 100 grit sandpaper and then I work my way up to around 320 and that seems to be enough to give her a nice finish. To make the armature for the tail, I start with some wire and unfortunately I didn't have any thicker gauge so what I did is took this one piece and twisted it together and then now I'm going to loop it up through her hole where her legs were and then twist it again. And I want to make sure it's very secure, so I'm going to be using my drill to twist it really tightly. With the wire nice and secure, I can go ahead and start beefing up the armature with some aluminum foil. I keep in mind that the area near her body is going to be thicker and bulkier and it is going to taper down at the end, so I use more foil at the top. 
This will not only help with the weight of all of that epoxy that's going to be built up on her tail, but it will actually help me with the cost of the epoxy because I'm not having to use as much. Once I'm happy with the armature, I can go ahead and get it posed to the shape that I like and bust out the epoxy skull. I mix up equal parts of A and B and I just continually mix these thoroughly until there's no longer striations of color, it's one uniform color. I would like to point out if you have never used epoxy skull before, you should wear gloves. I've used it many times and I don't have any issues with it, but use your best judgment. When the epoxy is fully mixed, I can go ahead and start slapping that on the tail. And this is just a base layer, so I'm not too concerned about imperfections because I'm going to be covering this anyway. I just want to get my basic shape down. I make sure to fill in the cavity where those legs used to be because I don't want to have a weak joint there. I also make sure to build up the epoxy on the hips because I like my mermaids to have a lot of junk in their trunk. To smooth out the surface of the epoxy, I alternate between using an acrylic roller and then just my fingers that are wet. After I'm happy with this base layer that I've gotten down, I set this aside to cure for 48 hours. And then when I come back to it, I promptly decide that I do not like the pose that she's in. And I break her and reform her into a new pose. Then I need to start filling in all of these little cracks that I've made. I am glad that I changed my mind and decided to repose her because I felt like even once I added more epoxy and the details to it, that it was, she was going to have balance issues if I kept her on that original pose. Here she is at her base layer, and when I was creating her tip of her tail there, I built up the tip around a piece of wire so that I would have a hole there already and not have to drill one for her final fins. Before I move on to her final sculpting pass, I go ahead and start sanding out any of the transition areas here because I want that to be nice and smooth. Now to form all of her scales, I take little bitty balls of epoxy, they're even smaller than little peas, I just lay these on there and then squish one in. When I first started, I thought I would be using the acrylic roller to do it, but I quickly figured out that it worked better with just a wet finger. A lot of times the epoxy was just sticking to the roller, so it wasn't worth the hassle. It seems to go forever, and eventually I got to the point where I was just pre-making tons of little balls and having them sitting there ready for me to go so I could get more into a groove. After I had all of my scales on, I did want to give them a little bit of texture, so I just took a little carving tool and did a few striations on all of the scales. Sorry, I got a little out of frame, so it's not very clear what I was doing. Then after I've done that, I take a wet paintbrush and just start rubbing down the scales thoroughly. This just helps compress them down to the form so they don't look quite as lifting as they were. At this point I decided I did want to forego clothes for her and instead just have some scaling on her chest and so I just used smaller versions of what's on her tail to cover up her breast. After the epoxy has had a chance to cure I did spray it with some surface primer and then after that is cured I can go ahead and start painting her and because the surface primer I used was gray and I did cover the chest scaling I did need to color correct her body so I've mixed up some paint and although it looks like I'm doing nothing that's a good thing because it means I matched up Laguna pretty well. I then sprayed her tail with some coral on the sides and a peachy color down the center and then I brought that blushing up into her body too. Her final coat is the Dragonfly Glaze that is the color shifting paint from Folk Art and it's the Red Violet Blue Shift. After that I go ahead and give her a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear so I can start blushing the body and the tail. For the lighter peach color I am shading those in a pan pastel that's a custom mix and I'm just shading those at the base of the, the scale itself. This is just adding a little bit of dimension to the scale. For the coral side, I am shading those with a magenta, and this particular pastel I'm using is a Prismacolor pastel stick. No Mermaid is complete without a nice set of fins, so we're going to start making those out of some wire and some mantelina film. I've already sketched out my fin design, then I take some 26 gauge floral wire, and I am cutting those down to size, and I'm cutting two of each one so that I can match up my fins. 
The two outer pieces are going to be cut longer because those will be the pieces that form the armature and the inner pieces will be cut just as short as that middle point is because they are just going to be the inner veining. From the armature I mark on the wires where they should meet and then I twist those together. After they're together, I can go ahead and start shaping them and matching them up to their corresponding lines. I go ahead and do this for all of the inner veins as well. Once I'm happy with all of the wire shapes, I can use a little bit of Gem Tack, which is a clear drying glue, to glue all of these wires onto the Angelina film. We want to make sure not to use too much of this because the glue can interfere with the fusing of the two sheets of Angelina film. Once all the glue down wires have had a chance to dry, I go ahead and apply a little bit of Gem Tack to the tops of the wires to secure the top piece of Angelina film. Once I have the glue applied, I can go ahead and put the other sheet of Angelina film on top of that, firmly pressing it down, sandwiching the wire in between the two sheets. Once that glue is dry, I can start cutting out the general shape of the fan. And I cut this out about a quarter inch from where the line is of where I intend for the overall fan shape to be. Once it's cut out, I sandwich it between two pieces of parchment paper and then run my flat iron along it very quickly. Be sure not to leave the flat iron just sitting in one spot for too long because it can start to actually burn and discolor the film. Now, very carefully, I use my lighter and I melt the edges of the fan. And I say be very careful with doing this because these are actually my third set of fans that I've made. My first set, I accidentally burned a hole in. Then when I went and made a second set, I didn't have any of the same color film and I just really wasn't happy with it. So had to order some new film, but third time's a charm. I do like these a whole lot better than the first two goes. Once my fins are complete, I can go ahead and start shaping them. And this is the reason that I chose this 26 gauge wire. It actually is easier to, to curl and form like this when you're using the Angelina film. To affix the fence to the tail, I have twisted the two ends together and I am just using a little bit of gel super glue down into that hole that I've already created and just stick those down in there and boom, fins are on. On to the face up. Here is all of the colors that I've used on this Laguna and uh, I just feel like the peachy colors go really well with the Laguna skin tone. I first wrapped up her hair and given her a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear. This just gives the vinyl some tooth and it helps the pastels and the pencils adhere to the surface of the vinyl. I use a Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat and if this is applied properly, you should see no shininess to the doll's face at all and if you feel it, it should feel almost like paper, like just a little bit of roughness to it. I had decided I wanted her to have a half-lidded expression along the lines of someone else sunbathing. It's just kind of relaxing and your eyes kind of close and just you're relaxed and just daydreaming a little bit. But my first pass, I did close her eyes a little bit too much. I'm like, I want her daydreaming, not drugged. So I opened those up just a little bit more and just refined the shape of my eyes before I moved on to blushing the face out. After I was happy with the shape, I did go ahead and fill in the whites of her eyes and then just started hitting up all of the areas that are in shadow like I normally do, just around the nose, the philtrum, underneath the lips, and around her ear thin things. <laughs> and I, I blush out on her cheeks a little peachy and I did decide I wanted something a little bit more pink than on the orange tone and did go back in and brighten that up with a little bit more of a pink color. At the start of layer two, I just start punching up some of those colors that I've already added in there. Uh, really deepening up the eyeshadow, I decided I wanted it to be a very coral color in the center on the top of the lid, but then towards the, the outside areas to deepen into a, a darker turquoise. So I deepened that out with some pencils and then using a blender pencil blended some more. I detail out the waterline, just going in with a deeper red right into the corners and then in the center I'm using a, a very light peach pink color. I have to say the whole time I worked on this doll I was panicking just a little bit. I've only done a few Lagunas and I have a really hard time not having a very bug-eyed look and I think because I did do the, the half-lidded expression on that it did help this time around. 
but she is one of the harder molds for me to work with, but she's such a perfect doll to make a mermaid out of, so it's hard to not choose her. On layer two specifically, I hated her. I was so worried that she was just going to turn out really muddy looking, and I just, I couldn't see her where she needed to be yet, and I'm glad I pushed through because I was very close to wiping her, like right here, but pushed through to layer three, she started looking much better, much more cohesive, and I was much happier. Just to catch up on a few of the things that I've done already, I did another pass on the whites of the eyes, darkened up the eyeliner, darkened up the lip line, as well as added some detail lines to the eyelids. And now I'm adding in her eyebrows. And I did decide I was going to do just short little cute eyebrows on her. Not very long ones. And I do these in a whole bunch of different shades. I just go straight in with the pencils. I didn't feel like that the pastel would show up well enough anyway. I just went straight in with some pencils adding some individual hairs. I now highlight her brow bone with a little bit of white pastel pencil. And then I'm going to highlight around her forehead and T-zone. I do another little swipe of white right around the tear ducts as well. The final thing on this layer is doing some darkening to the outer corners of the eyeshadow in the turquoise and the darker red. I feel like this is what kind of tipped it to a more cohesive, less muddy feel was doing that. At the start of layer three, I start defining the iris placement and I get those blocked in and then I start basing out her colors of the eye and I just base out the darker one, defining a little bit of where the pupil is going to be and then adding in that lighter purple into the middle. Next, I start adding in some of the shading of the eyeball, darkening up some of the whites of the eye so that they look a little rounder. I sharpen my pencil on a piece of sandpaper. This is just trying to get a very sharp tip so that I can do some of those nice striations. That sometimes you need a very sharp pencil to get something so tiny and detailed. I do pass number one on my bottom eyelashes and this is using the harder leaded pencil. I will do a second pass with a little bit softer leaded and it just you can see the difference in how much darker it makes the eyelashes. Then using a little bit of red pencil, I'm going to highlight the pouty nature of her lips by just highlighting that center of her bottom lip and then going up on the top lip, going between the two tubercles, throwing a little bit of lip anatomy at you there. And I blend that out with a blender pencil. For her fourth and final layer, I start adding in her final highlights. And then I'm just hitting up the tear ducts along the waterline. And then I'm going to go in with some striations of white straight through her iris. After I do that, I do need to go back and darken up her pupil. And then I add in her final catch lights. And I'm just doing two simple dots on this one because her eyes are so closed. Finally, I accentuate the eyelashes by doing some white highlights on the tops of those. And her face up's done. Do you want to go ahead and apologize because I am not able to show you how I made this hairstyle? It honestly was about five hours of me just fiddling with it. Braiding this, unbraiding that, wrapping this, unwrapping that. But I will explain a little bit of what I've done here. For the hairstyle itself, it's divided back down the center part line. And then each side has four sections. There is the one big section that forms at the front. That is the bun. Then there is the three sections that are at the temple. The top and the bottom temple sections are braids and the middle section is a piece that comes out from around there, goes underneath the bun and comes into a ponytail at the crown of the head. The two braids, the bottom one wraps up and around and then tucks back down. Then the top one goes up and around and did this little crossover thing and then comes back around. <laughs> All of the beaded pieces were made a very, very long time ago where I would have showed you this. Maybe I will do this again in another video, but I made these about 15 years ago working on a jewelry piece and they just wound up not working for it. And I just kept them, figured I could use them again one day. And sure enough, here they go into a doll. This was probably the most elaborate hairstyle I have ever and probably will ever do for a doll. It took a very long time, but this was my submission for the Doll Planet Hairs reroute contest and it was a lot of fun to try. And I don't know if you noticed, but I never gave her top lashes, and that was because I am going to attempt to do real lashes. 
And so the first thing I do is I snip them all smaller and then using a little bit of clear drying glue, I carefully put these on. I just add a little bit of extra glue to the base of these to make sure they're firmly on. And of course, no daydreaming mermaid is complete without her rock to lounge on. So I was on Thingiverse and found this particular uh, rock bridge that is made for mini. I'll link it in the description box below. But I printed it up on my Anycubic Photon Mono X. I very crudely cleaned off all of my supports because I didn't really care if it made marks or not because this is a rock. It's going to have kind of bumps and lumps on it. It wasn't that big of a deal if it had them on there. Then I popped it into the washing station and got it cured. And here is a sneak peek at my junkie closet with some of my stock boxes. Once it's cured, I go ahead and give it a base coat of gray primer and then I can start getting it painted. The first thing I do on the base layer is start applying all of my washes, and I'm going to do washes in the colors of Burnt Sienna, Taupe, Red, Payne's Gray, and Green. I'm really just blobbing these on, just randomly in all different spaces. It looks a little weird, but once you go in with your Payne's Gray color, you're going to start mixing those washes just a little bit. Not much, because you don't want it to be a solid color. You still want there to be color variation. And then finally, you're going to go in with the green and just start popping that just to be bright pieces of color where if you think moss might grow and things like that. Once all of the wash layers have had a chance to dry, then you're going to do a wash of black over everything. And I just do it all over it and then dab up some of the excess. The final three layers are all going to be dry brushing. And then I'm just taking first my base coat color and just doing it over the top of it, careful not to cover up too much of my washes. Then I'm going in with a color just a little bit lighter than that, hitting just the very high points, and then an almost white for the third one, and that one is just hitting the very edges that would be worn down and whitened the most. After all the paint is dry, I give it a coat of Mr. Super Clear to seal it. This way it doesn't have a shiny finish to it, and I'm going to start adding in some of my grass and moss to finish it off, and I'm just using a little bit of Mod Podge and then just throwing some of this on to where you think, like, that kind of stuff might grow on it. I really had a blast taking the photos for this doll. We have this little waterfall water feature that runs behind our condo and it just makes for taking such great pictures of the mermaid dolls. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and remember always be creating.